House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy to answer that question for us. Good morning to you, Congressman. Good morning. Do you think Nancy Pelosi will hand over those articles anytime soon? Well, she said before we left here, it was such with urgency that we had to mm. pass the weakest, the thinnest, the fastest impeachment. Now we know they're just not serious. We know their case is not strong. And now they want to change the rules. Remember in the House, they had the opportunity to ask any witness they wanted. They did not have the Clinton and Nixon rules. They did not give the minority the opportunity to request witnesses and allow us to bring them forward. Now they want to change the course. It just shows they have nothing on their agenda. She said she would change the agenda in 2020. No, we're right back at impeachment one more time. Mr. Minority Leader, maybe, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she spent the whole Christmas, New Year's break praying about it because this was a prayerful process. Maybe she has gotten received some revelation or is she just waiting for something else to change? I mean, is this just a delay tactic in the hopes the situation gets better? Does she really think she has leverage on Mitch McConnell? She's got no leverage on Mitch McConnell, and the, the House does not have leverage on the Senate, just as the Senate didn't have leverage on the House. Mm -hmm. What's really happening here is she's realizing how weak her case is. She's realizing that there's nothing there. She's realizing that her own requirements to move impeachment, it had to be overwhelming, compelling, and bipartisan. But at the end of the day, the only bipartisan vote was against impeachment. Her conference is even smaller than it was a year ago because a member had now left her conference by the way she treated the the Constitution in the last year. Right. So, I mean, I think she's realizing what a weak case she has, and she's looking around for an agenda that America wants, and she has no other agenda. Al Green said they'd keep impeaching them. They picked their committee chairs over impeachment. Their new freshman that gave them the majority on the day they were sworn in said they were going to impeach them. If America wants to continue just impeachment, keep them in the majority. But if you want to focus on something different, change the course of history and change who has the power in Washington. Uh, I'm confused, Congressman, because in that report by Griff Jenkins, he was talking about how, you know, now people are paying attention. John Bolton said he will appear to testify if subpoenaed. That's what he told the House. Yeah, and you know what? The Democrats in the House that had all the power to pick who they wanted, they never subpoenaed John Bolton. Right. They did not want him as a witness. It the House is the one that moves the impeachment. The Senate is the one that judges on it. It's not a place for the Senate to have more witnesses, just as Schumer said back in the Clinton. Remember where, why we are where we are today, because the House did not have a fair process. If the House had the Clinton-Nixon rules, this impeachment never would have moved forward. But they had to game the system, and now she's trying to change the system in the mm -hmm. Senate because she knows how weak this case is. Have, have, I know that you do internal polling all the time. I saw a uh, right-of-center poll this morning that suggested in swing districts, uh, Democrats are, and independents not so happy about the fact that their representatives, who are Democrats, uh, voted to impeach the president. No, because they promised one thing, that they would focus, that they would work together. And they did something fundamentally different. They moved impeachment on the president that even the most uh, respected constitutional scholar, Jonathan Turley, who did not vote for this president, said the only abuse of power would be moving impeachment by the Democrats. And remember, the voters will have a say than less a year from today. And what's going to happen here is these voters, which they, the Democrats have the majority, and they're sitting have with 30 members who currently sit in seats that President Trump carried, 13 of them I call a ruby red. He carried him overwhelmingly, and he'll carry him again. They're going to have to answer for why would they vote for the thinnest, weakest, fastest impeachment, and then the speaker hold the papers. There was no urgency because there was no case. Mr. Minority Leader, let's go to another topic that's been in the news uh, in the last couple of days, of course, the decisive killing of a terrorist leader in Soleimani uh, in Iraq. He was there killing our troops, has been for quite some time. Yet the Democrats quickly jumped to politics, accusing the president of either not having the information that he said he did or overstepping his bounds as commander in chief in the War Powers Resolution. Now, Democrats in the House, Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff, are, are, are pushing to bring a resolution forward to limit the president's power. Here's what Adam Schiff tweeted. He said, a dangerous and provocative decision to target a top Iranian official for killing, threats to bomb cultural sites and use disproportionate force. These are the acts of a president with no functional national security process. Congress must engage with hearings and constraints. So Adam Schiff says hearings. more hearings uh, on, on the commander in chief's prerogative. 
You know what? He's the chairman of the Intel Committee. Maybe had he spent the last year working on that, trying to protect us from what was happening in Iran, from the bombing of the takers, Saudi Arabia taking down our drone, instead of taking that committee and making an impeachment, he would never have made that comment. Today in the Gang of Eight, we'll have a briefing on this. I happened to have been with the president down in Mar-a-Lago the night that this took place. The one thing I have a clear understanding, this man had killed more than 600 Americans. This man had continued to rise throughout the region, create problems, not only for us, but the rest of the world. The world is safer today because this president took action and he stopped something from creating in the future. Do and you, I don't think it's a place for them to play politics. What do you know about what he was planning to do? What can you tell us? Because I was reading that he was planning to attack hundreds of diplomats and sailors and airmen, our military individuals. We'll go through in the Gang of Eight today, but you don't have to sit and wonder what was he planning to do. They've already taken down tankers. Remember what they have done. They had already killed an American. They had already gone over our embassy. What more would they need to do for us to act? That's the real question. What do the Democrats want? What do they think proportion it is when 600 American men, uh, our servicemen, were already killed by this individual? What is proportionate to them? Well, and what message does it send, Mr. Minority Leader, that if before you know, Democrats are talking about World War III and limiting the president's military powers before, uh, in the middle of this, call it a disagreement, call it a sh showdown, whatever you want, what message does that send to Iran that Democrats are going after our president as opposed to calling them out for what they do? The one thing I think they should understand is... Remember, America should speak with one voice. Not only was this a very clear message, not to Iran, but also to North Korea and any other bad players in the world, that if you attack an American, we'll respond in the appropriate manner and we will find any individual that we need to that tries to plan this. Remember what the president and his actions were when they shot down our drone that was unmanned. He did not attack. He did not provoke. He gave them an opportunity to disarm. And what they do? They escalated it. They attacked our embassy. They killed an American. And that's where he had the red line in the sand. It's, it is appropriate for what the president had done. It is inappropriate for what the Democrats are saying today. They should speak with one voice. They should be inside these hearings, and they should work together to make America safer instead of only focusing on impeachment. Remember, this is a president that's trying to remove terrorists from the world, and all they're trying to do, the Democrats are trying to do is remove the president. Well, it is an election year, and it is a political job. Nobody knows it better than that, than you. Kevin McCarthy, thank you very much for thank joining you. us live. Thank you, sir. Thank you.